What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So finally, we got some updates and some interesting news. As undefeated three-division world champion, who simultaneously held the WBA super title at super featherweight, the WBA regular title at lightweight, the WBA regular title at junior welterweight, superstar boxer Javante Tank Davis. 27 wins, no loss, no draw. 25 big wins by way of knockout. 28 years of age, 5'5", five five with a 67-inch arm reach. He and his team have updated us on their concerns with their April 15th Las Vegas, Nevada mega showdown with undefeated lightweight junior welterweight Mexican superstar title contender King Rod Ryan Garcia, who is 23 wins, no loss, no draw, 19 wins by way of knockout. He is uh, 24 years of age, 5'10", with a 70-inch army. They're supposed to face off April 15th, Las Vegas, Nevada. Javante Tane Davis and his team and his longtime uh, trainer, manager, father figure, mentor figure, and coach Calvin Ford, they had concerns about the newfound physique and muscle mass and gain on the part of Ryan Garcia, to which they started to question, is Ryan Garcia possibly indulging in performance enhancers, allegedly? Now, obviously, Javante Tank Davis, he has a, a big fight coming up tonight that he has to worry about and he has to satisfy against undefeated WBA super featherweight world champion Dominican star boxer Hector Garcia, who is 16 wins, no loss, no draw, 10 wins by way of knockout, 31 years of age, 5 foot 9 with a 67-inch uh, army. That's tonight, Washington, D.C., uh, in that DMV area for Javante Tank Davis, somewhat of a homecoming fight. So obviously, Javante Tank Davis, he has to deal with Hector Garcia first, who is an Olympian, who is a Southpaw, who's coming off of the two of the biggest wins of his career, who is uh, very uh, uh, confident, uh, very skilled, and very... Uh, um, crafty right and he's a southpaw as well so javante tank davis who's a southpaw he has to focus on hector garcia but with that said obviously in the build-up to javante tank davis's fight and ryan garcia being a much bigger commodity than hector garcia right um many people are uh asking questions about what's next with ryan garcia ryan garcia possibly could be at this fight uh ryan garcia wants to get in the ring supposedly to you know want to start to promote this fight it's a big deal, Ryan Garcia versus Javante Tank Davis. The biggest fight in Tank Davis's career. It would be the biggest fight in Ryan Garcia's career, right? Uh, so again, I believe Javante Tank Davis is going to be victorious against Hector Garcia. But first and foremost, he got to handle this, this business in the ring, okay? Uh, what I believe and what actually takes place in the ring could be two different things. So nonetheless, he got to handle that business first. Um, but according to his team, according, according to 6040, who is... Uh, you know, um, a PR and a, and, a, and a manager. He works with Javante Tank Davis. Uh, he works for a lot of fighters, Adrian Broner. Uh, he, he's some, uh, sometimes with Errol Spence. You see him with a lot of fighters, especially the DMV area fighters. And uh, 6040 was, and Javante Tank Davis was asked about it because immediately following uh, Javante Tank Davis's weigh-in uh, for Hector Garcia, Vada stepped in immediately uh and they you know uh ordered that javante tank davis get tested immediately so he didn't have an issue with it they didn't even let him rehydrate so vada is voluntary anti-doping uh, uh, associations okay uh and so you know um javante tank davis has signed up with vada he wants to make sure you know uh everything is on the up and up as he should his power is natural he's a knockout artist he's a boxer first right so javante tank davis uh, he stated that, you know, um, he asked, you know, he was asked about it. Is Ryan Garcia, what's your concerns with Ryan Garcia with, with PEDs, performance enhancements, allegedly having extra uh, advantages? Coach Calvin is saying that he looked at pictures before and after, uh, and, you know, it just don't look like a natural uh, 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 growth period, right? And so 6040, he informed Javante Tank Davis in this interview that Ryan Garcia has indeed entered the VITA uh, testing program. Uh, I'm sure Javante Tank Davis has made it abundantly clear, just like his mentor in the sport of boxing and retired legendary iconic Hall of Fame superstar boxer turned uh, promoter uh, and founder of Mayweather Promotions, that being none other than Floyd Miller himself, who introduced performance enhancing testing into the sport of boxing, Olympic style testing, because Floyd Mayweather, he, uh, his, his, the, having no blemish and no uh, um, hiccups on his resume, 
is important. So Floyd Miller said, if you're going to beat me, you're going to beat me honestly. And when Floyd Miller was uh, on the verge of having the biggest fight of his career and the biggest fight in boxing history between himself and legendary eight division world champion, iconic Filipino superstar boxer, Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. And Floyd Miller said, listen, Manny Pacquiao started his career at 106 pounds. He worked his way all the way up to 154 pounds and got better each division as he aged and got more power and more faster as gained more power and more speed as he uh, progressed in age and in weight classes which is just simply not normal within the sport of boxing. Manny Pacquiao is somebody who is five foot five with a 67 inch arm reach southpaw that's explosive, just like Javante Tank Davis, ironically. But Manny Pacquiao, you know, is not the most skilled guy. He relied on his hand speed uh, and his power, his obliterating power and his uh, uh, lightning fast uh, foot speed. And so Floyd Miller took notice to that. And Floyd Miller, everybody started to point to Manny Pacquiao as the man to put the blemish on Floyd Mayweather's resume. Many people wanted to see Floyd Mayweather lose. And Floyd Mayweather said, listen, no problem. I'll fight any and everybody, but you're gonna do these testing because that's just not natural, okay? And we're hearing things. Manny Pacquiao, he actually took Floyd Mayweather to court and he won because Floyd Mayweather uh, alleged, you know, uh, had accusations against Manny Pacquiao that Manny Pacquiao deemed to be, you know, uh, down in his, uh, um, his, uh, his name, right? So uh, Manny Pacquiao won that because obviously he never tested positive, positive for a banned substance. Uh, and so with that said, you know, um, we had uh, Floyd Mayweather introduce this Olympic style testing to the sport of boxing, to which many people had an issue with it. Many people complained about it. They said Floyd Mayweather, even a uh, uh, legendary iconic trainer, Hall of Fame trainer, well-renowned trainer, Freddie Roach, who trained Manny Pacquiao for years, okay? Freddie Roach trained Manny Pacquiao for years. And for, and uh, he even stated that Manny, uh, Floyd Miller is, is introducing something that's not necessary, that's something we don't do in the sport of boxing. We don't do this type of testing in the sport of boxing. Who is he to uh, demand that we do these types of testing? And so the fight got postponed for five years. Five years, because Floyd Miller stood his ground. And people were saying that Floyd Miller was a chicken, Floyd Miller was avoiding Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Miller was ducking Manny Pacquiao, all because Floyd Miller stated that he just wanted Manny Pacquiao to be on an even playing field with him. And if he had if he had nothing to hide, that he would want to take the test like he was taking the test. Manny Pacquiao had many reasons to not take the test. He stated that uh, because he was a, a he didn't like needles, okay? Uh, which Manny Pacquiao, we knew that not to be the truth because Manny Pacquiao has multiple visible tattoos so if you didn't like needles and you was afraid of needles like he stated then why would you have multiple uh, uh visible tattoos on your arms on your forearms and things of that nature even tattoos on his chest uh you know those tattoos that's a needle and it takes it's a much longer process than uh, uh getting blood drawn you understand now some people are weak to taking to getting blood drawn but if you was afraid of needles then you wouldn't be having multiple visible tattoos okay uh that's number one then manny pacquiao he changed it to say well uh the drawing blood process makes him weak and then before the fight if he uh if it's before the fight he'll be weak in the fight and won't be at full strength well then floyd miller said well listen uh, this is the name of the game either you take it or leave it okay then manny pacquiao he switched it to wanting to know because vada they do uh, uh, um, random style testing, right? Which means they pop up at any given point, just like they did with Javante Tank Davis, where Javante Tank Davis steps off the scale from his weigh-in with Hector Garcia, and Vada shows up and say, listen, take this walk with us. You understand what I'm saying? So they can do it at any given time, at any point in time. And Manny Pacquiao then stated that he wanted uh, uh, to know when they were scheduling to come, which would give him an advantage if he allegedly was on or did something. That would give Manny Pacquiao an advantage to know when they're coming if he was doing something allegedly to cycle off. So Floyd Miller and Vada said they're not going to agree to inform or notify Manny Pacquiao when they're coming. That beats the whole purpose of it being random, okay? And then having surprises and being able to keep you on pins and needles not to be able to maneuver around. So Javante Tank Davis and Coach Calvin, they said that they would handle it accordingly. Which lead me to believe that, you know, when Coach Calvin was asked, he said, well, what if, you know, Ryan Garcia refuses to take the test? This could be another Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather situation that got postponed for five years. He said, well, then you got to take that up with Ryan Garcia. 
Well, now we have great news because Ryan Garcia has entered, according to 6040 and team uh, Javante Tank Davis, he has entered the VADA testing program uh, to make it happen. So April 15th, all goes well. Tonight with uh, Javante Tank Davis, April, 5th, April 15th, Las Vegas, Nevada, big fight. So that's great news. So let's see how this unfolds. I personally think that this should be a part of the purse. See, another problem with this uh, uh, um, testing is that fighters have to pay for this testing out their own pockets, okay? These fighters don't want to be paying big money for this testing, but they pay these sanctioned bodies sanctioned fees, okay? 10% of their purses for these fights, okay? So the sanctioned bodies, the WBC, WBA, IBF, and the WBO should be paying a a portion of that percentage of the, the money that they get paid from the fighters for VADA. So every single fighter has to be in VADA testing. It shouldn't be you, WBC has clean boxing program, WBO don't. It should be none of that. It should be universal. Every single fighter has to go through testing. We see in too many, the sport of boxing is already dangerous in itself. There's no reason why this shouldn't just be a universal law within the sport of boxing, just overall. And it should come from the promoters, the managers, the networks, and the sanction bodies. The fighters should not have to pay out their pockets for VADA testing. So that's why you have some fighters making uh, $10 million and then his opponent makes $500,000, okay? Now, if you if your opponent is making $500,000 and, and, and he's making $10 million, well, I don't want to pay for VADA testing out my small purse. You can pay for it out your $10 million, but I'm not making $10 million. You understand? So there's a there's a grave dis difference in, in pay. So therefore, it should be universal. The percentage come out of the sanction bodies, the networks, and the managers, period. So let's see how this unfolds and plays out. But that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy, Blue. Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All in one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to Black Media Row. Make sure you like and share the videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace.